Hello everyone, this is Joe at the National Weather Service at Billings. Let's take a quick look at what to expect for the 2014-15 winter. First, here is the official outlook for the December, January, February period from the Climate Prediction Center issued on September 18th. As you can see, our region is highlighted for an increased likelihood of above normal temperatures. The EC on the precipitation map shows equal chances of above, below, or near normal precipitation, which is to say that there is not a strong climate signal to suggest a deviation from climatology as far as precipitation is concerned. So, what is behind this outlook? We are expecting the development of a weak El Nino episode in the tropical Pacific Ocean for this winter. El Nino is the warm phase of the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, and it causes a shift in weather tendencies around the globe. For our purposes, warm water in the eastern equatorial Pacific helps to enhance the Pacific jet and reduce the strength of the polar jet. Overall, this can result in warmer and drier conditions in our region. However, these tendencies are more pronounced during a moderate or strong El Nino which is not expected to occur this winter. Also keep in mind that even in a strong El Nino, our region is still prone to experience cold outbreaks during the course of winter. More on this a bit later. No one thing ever determines our weather. It is rather a combination of factors coming together, many of which are difficult or impossible to predict very far in advance. There are other teleconnections around the globe besides ENSO, which I won't get into here. These can give us clues about shifts in our weather pattern a week or two in advance, but that's about all. Computer models, statistical forecast tools, and recent climate trends are also considered for seasonal predictions by CPC. Polar sea ice plays a role during our winter. Current sea ice cover is below normal, and this can affect how strong and cold air masses are allowed to build in the Arctic. Other factors which are highly variable are snow cover and wind, both of which greatly influence temperatures during the course of a winter. Snow cover makes us colder, and wind warms us up quickly. The last item on my list is timing. For example, a heavy snowfall in October will melt quickly since it is so early in the season but the same snow event in early December can set the stage for an extended period of snow cover and colder than normal temperatures due to the very low sun angle and short days in midwinter. While all of these influences can make seasonal forecasts difficult, they also make our job as meteorologists fun and exciting, in my opinion, of course. A few more things to consider. What about last year's record-breaking snowfall at Billings? Does that mean anything? The answer is no, definitely not. Each winter is independent of others, so a snowy winter last year does not correlate to a snowy winter this year. Also keep this in mind, Billings set a snowfall record with over 100 inches last year, but most of the region did not see record-breaking snowfall, and believe it or not, total snowfall during the months of September, October, November, March, April, and May was actually below normal at Billings. You also might be wondering, what about the snow event we experienced in mid-September? It was a remarkably early snow event for our region, but it has no impact on the upcoming winter. In fact, over the years, we have had many snow events in September that were followed by mild winters, 1982 was a very good example. It snowed six inches in Billings on September 14, 1982, but the 82-83 winter was one of our warmest and driest on record. Of course, we also had a strong El Nino that year. Finally, just a little bit about our winter climatology. We really do live in a unique location along the High Plains. To our north, there is nothing to stop cold Canadian air masses from sliding down the east slopes of the Rockies and into our area. At the same time, we are prone to see strong downslope winds develop off the mountains, which causes warm and dry spells even during the middle of winter. 
our winter climatology would change tremendously if you either added a large mountain range to our north or removed the Rocky Mountains. Think about the differences between Livingston and Bozeman, two cities in close proximity but separated by mountains. Always expect the extremes in our region during the winter. On the east side of the mountains, average is not something that occurs very often. That's all I have. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to call us or chat through social media anytime. Have a good day and a good winter.